Welcome to the Trade Port Connector with Tommy. This video is on your wall and your superstars results from this week being February 16th, 2014. Starts off with birthdays for the, uh, this week. Ricardo Rodriguez, real name, Jesus Rodriguez, turned 38, 28 years old. He was born February 17th, 1986. Jimmy Jacobs, real name of Chris Scobilly, or Scobill. Turned 30 years old. He was born February 17, 1984. Jacobs continues to work for the Ring of Honor promotion. The late Mike Awesome, real name, Michael Alfonso, took his own life on this date back in 2007, February 17, at the age of 42. Hmm. What is it about the age of 42? Hmm. Former pro wrestler Chris Champion, a.k.a. Christopher Ash. Smith, turned 53 years old. He was born February 17, 1961. His best run came as part of the new breed tag team with Sean Royal. Former WWE wrestler Dan Grell, real name David Keith, turned 45 years old. On Sunday, he was born February 16, 1969. Former WWE broadcast team member Hugo Savinovich. Celebrated his 55th birthday on Saturday. He was born February 15th, 1959. In a fun trivia note, he was once married to the WWE Hall of Famer Wendy Richter. He remarried and has two children with his wife Diana. That part I did not know. Uh, former WWE wrestler Raymond Rojo turned 59. He was born February 18th, 1955. He owns income management properties and is active in local politics in Quebec. That goes on with his Canadian character. The New York brother. Former TNA wrestler Hannah and Holly Blossom, Lucy and Kelly Sharp were her real names, turned 26. They were born February 18, 1988. The twins recently announced that they were leaving TNA and Ohio Valley Wrestling to pursue other career interests. Kerry Von Eric, aka Kerry Atkinson, died on February 18, 1993, when he took his own life. The former NWA champion was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, along with the rest of the, fa the family in 2009. Kerry's daughter, Lacey, worked for TNA at one time. He recently got married, I think, sometime last year. Eddie Gilbert died on February 18, 1995. And for those that didn't know or haven't heard, also uh, who died yesterday on this year's date was uh, uh, not a name. Viscera, Big Daddy V, also known as Mabel, King Mabel, from Men on a Mission as well. Well, Gilbert died at the age of 33. He, and he died February 18, 1985. No pro wrestling shows for ESPN Classic on Monday nor Tuesday. A uh, global supercar wrestling show will return on Thursday. There was an interview that was done with Mike Gurk from uh, Mike Gurkert. The Gurk, I should say. Also, it was a, a VOC Nation in the room. From the VOC Nation Radio Network, follow on Twitter at VOC Nation. Show available on Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at VOCNation.com. On its current status, the, uh, the wrestler com uh, comments, I think it was... Well, uh, he's, re he's retired from wrestling due to injuries. The final show was fractured, a fractured ulnar bone in his left arm, 13 screws and two steel plates. He fixed it and after suffering, <coughs> or having two surgeries, it's still not right. But, uh, I didn't write the name down or on this, on my computer. It's none other than Scotty Riggs. With only American male theme music, he comments, that was the creative genius of Jimmy Hart. Miles of the South. He and Michael Hayes did a lot of 
the music over the years in WCW, Jimmy saw in me and Marcus a mix of the fabulous ones, the Fantastics and the Rock and Roll All Express, Rock and Roll One. His passion for those three tag teams came overflowing through that song. The first time we heard it, Jimmy was all excited and Marcus Alexander Bagwell also. And I looked at each other and they're uh, seeing their jaws drop. I thought, oh my god, it's horrible, but this will work. Any comments on whether he could have been a main event talent? I don't know, to be honest with you. There's always a main event run in somebody. I just didn't play the BS politics game. It really got heavy and deep. Everyone coming in and had creative control in their contract. I was the 47th hire in WCW. The creative control didn't exist back then. I had many influential friends. So I could have played that card, but that's just not me. Comments on Eric Bischoff. Eric Bischoff never had the final say so in what was being done. Vince McMahon had the final say so. There were too many chiefs in WCW and not enough Indians. Eric was a great businessman when it came from going from Saturday night shows to getting us on primetime TV. He was never groomed as a booker. He was never groomed to understand that the inner workings of an angle or storyline, the booking committee was get, was getting things done for him. He left things in the control of people like Kevin Sullivan and Arn Anderson. Comments on Vince Russo. Vince Russo came in and tried to turn WCW into another WWE. He didn't care about wrestling. He cared more about his crash TV style. He had skits and promos longer than the matches themselves. On Bischoff vs. McMahon, Eric saw everything in short term. There was no long term agenda. Vince had a, has a long term agenda in terms of WrestleMania. Everything all year builds towards that one big event. On the other hand, Bischoff ran things week by week, and you can't be successful without that vision. Any comments on the eye patch? It was real. It was a chair to the eye with the chair landed the wrong way up. The corner of the chair caught my eye. I had a bruised eye, and it became part of the character. And now for the dark match. Uh, prior to Raw, there wasn't one. And now for Super Sire's taping. The air is on Thursday, somewhere on the internet. Probably going to be on the network coming up. Biggie Langston defeated Drew McIntyre with the big ending to retain the IC title. And Natalya defeated Tamina Snuka. Nothing more than that. Finally, the three hour Raw from the USA Network. Not from Gilligan's Island, but airing live from Denver, Colorado at the Pepsi Center. Michael Cole saw welcomed the viewer to Raw. John Cena's being played. He made his entrance. While Jerry King Lawler and JBL checked on commentary. Cena received a mixed reaction from the crowd. He played to the fans by saying, They were live from Denver. Cena hyped the Elimination Chamber match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Cena then put over the danger of the match and said it can end careers. He said the winner of the match punches his ticket. To history and gets get a guaranteed WrestleMania main event against Batista. Cena said Randy Orton has no momentum heading into the Elimination Chamber. He pointed out that Randy Orton has been beaten in recent weeks by Daniel Bryan himself. And then he said the odds say that there will be a new champion on Sunday. Well, due to the uh, events on, uh, on, uh, on Raw, the only man he lost to. Uh, the only man Randy Orton beat was Christian. Huh. Okay, the Real Americans team play for the first match after what uh, about 15 minutes. At least I didn't go a full 20 minutes of the, of the BS racing wrestling on Raw. Jeff Coulter led the Tony on Cesaro onto the stage and spoke as they headed to the ring. Coulter said Cesaro was the next champion. Cesaro pointed out that. Cena wasn't the only one who beat Orton last week. Cesaro said he would become the new champion, the new face of WWE, and the new face of America. And the fans, of course, too. Cena then called, called for Cesaro to join him in the ring. They stood face to face. Cena congratulated Cesaro for beating Orton. He said that doesn't mean Cesaro isn't on a winning streak. It means Orton is on a losing streak. 
He added that Cesaro has never been in the Elimination Chamber match and said he shouldn't write checks that his body won't, won't be able to cash. Sheamus' music then played. If I was expecting, well, everybody shows up for the night before pay-per-view. Or the money night before pay-per-view. Uh, Sheamus' uh, music played and he spoke as he headed to the ring and he said he's been inside the chamber twice and there's nothing like it. He said both of their faces would look funny when he kicks their teeth in and then Christian's music interrupted Shamu, uh, I should say Seamus, the human matchstick. As he headed out with the mic in hand, he said Seamus would have saved his road kick for Dean Ambrose. He said he wasn't mad about what happened on SmackDown because he knows it was an accident. Christian then said he was going to hit the kill switch on Seamus inside the chamber, and that won't be an accident. Then we get Randy Orton's music playing as he talked into his head. Can you hear something from him, of course? And he walked out with both title belts draped over his shoulders. He thanked the authority for giving him the opportunity to beat all of them in the chamber and said Seamus' road kick wouldn't get anywhere near him during their match. Then we finally get Daniel Bryan. Music played and he came out wearing his new t-shirt, much better than a goat face, etc. There were pockets of fans doing the Borgasm chants of yes, while other fans remained seated. Brian did say, uh, said that the people were do, doing the talking for him. And he didn't need to say anything. He said that the chamber all leads to WrestleMania 30 and he's worked too hard to let it slip through his fingers. Brian said there will be an entire arena chanting yes on Sunday. Well, then we get Kane's music interrupted and he walked out wearing a suit with a mic in hand. And you get the sound, uh, you sold out. From the crowd, Kane said that the authority gave him a chance to rectify his mistake that, has, that he has been making, and the crowd chanted, "You sold out!" Again, uh, Kane stood on the ring steps and said he left. He was left in charge for the night. Kane stood on the ring apron and said Orton would face Sheamus. So it was only right that the others competed as well. Kane booked John Cena versus Cesaro, Christopher versus Daniel Bryan, and then he said. Daniel Bryan would, and he would stay at ringside during that match. So we, get, uh, we got Christian versus Bryan match. First is the announcers hype Mark Henry versus Roman Reigns, and the Wyatts versus Los Matadors and Sankara. Bryan stood in the ring and motioned for Kane to, to come fight him. Kane teased there in the ring, but Christian attacked him from behind. Christian threw Brian into the barricade of ringside. Cole Paul pointed out that the match hasn't even been started. Or the ball bell in the ring rang yet. So oh, Christian is putting boots of Brian outside the ring. Very good opening segment that put spotlight on the elimination chamber match. It set up some raw matches in the process. WWE did a good job of establishing several matches that will appear on, on the show. Wish they would take that approach every week. Then we get the Reigns. Versus Mark Henry match. Advertising. So it feels a random and deserve more hyping. But we'll see how that how, how they handle it. Then the Christian tackle Brian and with a nice and unexpected touch. <coughs> Daniel Bryan versus Christian. Fullstar pointed out that the referee Charles Robinson checked with Brian before the match to make sure he was ready to go. He also said that Brian was essentially fighting with one arm due to Christian's attack. That was the story of the first five minutes of the match as Christian controlled the offense and shut down Brian's offense. Brian hit a suicide dive, heading into the commercial break, and came up selling the shoulder as Kane watched him. Or watched on. The suicide dive was great. As Brian bounced off, Christian and intentionally slammed the shoulder he was selling into the barricade. A really nice touch and very well executed. Brian came back with a flip off the ropes and a running clothesline. He followed up with kicks and then received the Borgasm Yes chance. Reaction from the crowd and managed to get a two count. The feed cut out momentarily. Not sure if that was on the reporter system. But of course, uh, Direct TV overall. Luckily, I had this network. Did not happen because I would have called in and complained. That's what I normally do. 
uh, or USA, uh, 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 USA in general, if it wasn't on my end. Of course, I cut off, cut off the charging Brian by lifting a, up a, a boot. Moments later, Kristen went for the kill switch, but Brian countered by hooking Kristen's shoulders with his feet and rolled him up for the win. The match took 10 minutes 50 seconds. Well, momentarily after the match, Kane congratulated Brian on his win and said he neglected to inform him that he had one more match. Kane announced that his opponent will be himself. Kane then removed his jacket and, and tie and said confidently, not in approval. Kane entered the ring and Brian went after him. But Kane knocked him to ringside. Brian sold the shoulder again at ringside, heading into the commercial break. Really enjoyed the first 30 minutes of the show. Christian versus Brian was very good. And Brian did a great job of selling the shoulder throughout. The broadcast team has been engaged and um, are putting over Brian's shoulder injury and how it could affect him in the chambers. Coming up this coming Sunday, Daniel Bryan versus Kane. The match was joined already in progress with Kane working over Brian's bad shoulder. Kane wore his dress pants and shoes and wife beater t-shirt. JBL put the match over as a pay-per-view worthy and must see. Kane suplexed Brian and covered him for a two count. As Jared King complained about Kane claiming he forgot to tell Brian he had another match, the crowd picked up the use all out chat on Kane again. Brian then came back with a missile drop kick, but it didn't take long for Kane to shut him down again. Kane took Brian to ringside and ran the shoulder into the barricade again. Kane put Brian on the ring apron and bent his shoulder around him around the ring post. And the referee counted to five for the disqualification on Kane. Well, the match took about four minutes, minus the commercial break. It took almost longer than the match. Kane continued to attack after the break and the bell and ran him into the ring steps. He placed Brian's arm over the steps and kicked it. Kane then grabbed the microphone and said, Yeah, I know I'm disqualified. Then Kane did the play and he headed to the back while Brian was left lying in the ring. What was this? Done to take Brian out of the chamber match to explain why he doesn't win the chamber match or to set up the big underdog victory in the chamber. Either way, they ate up 30, 30 minutes of TV time with Brian looking sympathetic and both Christian and Kane looking ruthless. Backstage interview with Renee Young and The Shield. Dean Ambrose said that he surprised Mark Henry showed up after the meeting he, he gave him last week. One of Reigns pointed out that Ambrose lost, it, lost that match. Ambrose asked him if he think he can do better. And of course, one of I know I can. Uh, Seth Rollins told Young that the Shield is always on the same page. He said that they were born and bred for war. Ambrose said that the Wyatt family mind games won't work on them. Rain said they don't experience fear and they don't back down the broadcast team. Then hype Shield versus the Wyatt family. World Elimination Chamber. Tension between Reigns and, and Ambrose continued uh, to grow heading into the chamber. While well, Rollins seems to be playing the peacekeeper role, or at least changes the subject whenever he can, I assume the Reigns vs. Mark Henry match will give viewers a taste before the White family cut it off. Then a graphic noted that when you sign up for WWE Network, you will be able to watch every WrestleMania in history. As Cole saw hype the launch of WWE Network for 9 a.m. on Monday, Emma made uh, Emma made her entrance with Santino Morella and a brief video package of her in NXT was shown. I think this was a mistake at 9 a.m. I think on uh, some uh, I think it was on main event tonight. Uh, they made a mistake and said after Raw. Goes off the air on this coming Monday after the elimination tournament. But, whatever date that the 24th is, well, there you go. Okay, back to the match. What, what was a match, if you follow the match. <coughs> Emma made her interest with Santino Morella, and a brief video package of her in NXT was shown. Santino Morella with Emma versus Found Dango with Summer Ray. Santino pulled out, pulled out the Cobra early. Wasted too much time, some were still on the ring apron for the detraction, but Emma pulled her down and performed an airplane spin. Santino and Emma nearly kissed, but Fandango interrupted, so they were so close to the 
Wing apron and saying, and Fandango kicked Santino before they before they could kiss. And Fandango ended up pinning Santino in two minutes and forty seconds. It was nice to see Fandango use something other than the top rope leg drop as his finisher. I could actually see the fans getting into a build up for the first kiss between Santino and Emma. If that's where this is, go is going, it's not what I want to see. But I could see it catching on, of course. This is pro wrestling. So the build-up would probably result in Emma turning on Santino. Mark Henry was talking about walking backstage with Renee Young catching up to a point interview. She said Henry nearly became U.S. champion last week. He, he said he should have won the title last week, but it's not about titles winning or losing this time. He said it's about Inducting someone into the WWE Hall of Pain as the Shield made their entrance. A graphic was shown after a commercial break for Teddy Roosevelt because it's President's Day in the United States. And we get Mark Henry versus Roman Reigns with Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Well, I was expecting a three-on-one beatdown myself. Well, I was surprised it was a one-on-one -on -one, actually. Also, I noted that uh, Henry was still wearing a wrap on his arm, selling the Brock Lesnar attack. First big move of the match was Ambrose performing a Samoan drop on Henry for a two count. Henry came right back with a JYD headbutt and then a corner splash. Reigns knocked Henry down and then tagged him with a Superman punch. And Reigns went over to his corner and speared Henry for the win. The match only took two minutes and 50 seconds and a squash move. After the match, Rollins rushed in to congratulate Reigns while Ambrose was more deliberate and looked jealous. Ambrose put the boots to Henry. What are you doing, said, said Roman. Uh, outside the ring, Reigns and Rollins both smiled and shook their heads. The Wyatt family sounder played, and Ray Wyatt was singing, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. There, as the crowd was saying, down in my heart to stay, he said. Uh, as he was on the big screen, while well, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan stood by, Wyatt said he felt childlike excitement building up in his up in him as the day of reckoning were drew closer. He said their shattered bones will pave the street of his kingdom. Harper said and asked if they are willing to die for this. As Wyatt said, if they're not, they've already lost. Then he shook the mic and said, "How about you come out here and talk that noise?" Why I said it's funny he said that because he was thinking the very same thing. Well, Wyatt family music played and out they come to cheers and the light as the lights go out. Broadcast team spoke of having goosebumps and how incredible the match was going to be as the Wyatt family made their ring entrance. Wyatt climbed on the ring apron and his minions joined him. Wyatt entered the ring momentarily with his men remaining on the outside. Rain stepped forward, and then Rowan and Harper entered the ring, then Ambrose and Rollins stepped up as well. The Wyatt family left the ring, and then the fans booed. Chicken out of the match, Wyatt said it, it belongs to him. The broadcast team hyped Cena versus Cesaro and Orton versus Seamus. Well, later in the show, they got a commercial. Surprised to see Henry lose so clean and so easily. It's a squash match. Granted, I expected Reigns to come out on top of an eventual match. But I didn't think it would be be this easy on Raw like this. Nevertheless, the Shield and the Wyatt family felt like the hottest thing on the Elimination Chamber card, including the actual Elimination Chamber match. Then Coleslaw announced Goldust and Cody Rhodes versus Curtis Axel and Ryback as the Elimination Chamber kickoff match. Well, uh, Cody Rhodes and Goldust were backstage playing with a WWE Smackdown toy. And then you got Bad News Barrett coming for his Bad News segment. In the room and then kick the toys over. Forgot about all the Daniel Bryan's conspiracy theories. How about the way that the momentum of Goldust and Cody has been killed? They lose the tag titles to the New Age Outlaws. They get their asses kicked by Brock Lesnar. Can't win a rematch against the Outlaws despite a moonsault off the top of the cage from Cody. And now you're shown playing with toys backstage? What a shame. Well. Remember WCW? It's where the big boys play? Boys play with toys. Match number five, Jack Swagger, Wizard of Culture versus Kofi Kingston. The live crowds humored themselves with 
what sounded like a JBL chant as Swagger dominated Kingston. Kofi came back with a nice drop kick off top rope and a full front kick in the corner. Kingston ended up hitting the SOS, but Swagger got, got his foot on the bottom rope for the save. Swagger ended up applying the Patriot Lock for the win in a, in a match taking only 4 minutes 40 seconds. After the match, Big E made his entrance. Cole Thiles said, E, hey, match coming up. Big E entered the ring as Swagger ducked out to the ringside. Cole Thiles questions whether Swagger and Coulter would hang around for E's match. As they go to commercial, an ad for SmackDown questioning whether the Viper will strike back after the grueling gauntlet. I was surprised to see Kingsley get a near fall with Swagger needed a credibility boost heading into the Intercontinental title match. He was hoping there's some type of angle coming up after the break. Intercontinental champion Big E versus Drew McIntyre and Jacob Mahal in a handicap match. Uh, Dragon and Coulter remained at ringside. Zeb had a mic in hand and mocked Big E. He questioned whether his name stands for Big Embarrassment. Then scored a cheap heat. By saying Swagger would beat him like a like the Seahawks beat the Broncos. Big E performed a backbreaker on Mahal, but McIntyre blasted him with a big kick to the face. Langston came back, uh, came up bleeding from the mouth, presumably from the kick. Langston pushed McIntyre to the floor and ended up hitting both men in the ring with belly to belly suplexes. And Big E splashed both opponents. Big E eventually performed a suplex on Mahal who caught McIntyre with his boots on the way down. Then Big E hit Big, e hit big ending on both men and pinned McIntyre. Afterwards, Big E said he hoped that they make diapers in Zeb's sizes because after Sunday his mouth won't be the only thing full of fat. And the match only took 4 minutes 15 seconds. In that segment, Zeb had to ask the crowd if they caught E and thought E could beat Swagger in a few a few times. His lines before that were failing, uh, falling flat. Meanwhile, E was cut and he nearly dropped the 3MB member on top of one another with a belly to belly spot. The match was a mess and failed to generate any more interest in the Intercontinental title match for the viewers. And Alexander Rusev and Lana backstage pro row Vignette was shown. As I didn't see that little, that little segment. A lot of hyping the six man tag match. Black History Month video package focusing on Damn Ron Simmons as a famous word. An Elimination Chamber video played. Backstage, Renee Young interviewed John Cena, who once again said to the viewers the, the, the young stars who think they, they have what it takes to that must go through him to prove it. Starting with Cesaro, John Cena made his entrance for his match against Cesaro. In my opinion, this was the match of the evening. Highlights there from SmackDown of Cesaro pinning Randy Orton, Cole uh, hyping Steve Stone Cold, interview with John Cena for Tuesday's podcast. Uh, as uh, Stone Cold interviewing Cena will be definitely a must listen interview. The timing of the match couldn't even be worse after the Swagger vs. Kingston segment. The Real Americans thing is tiring and I didn't need to see Coulter or Swagger again tonight along this soon. Match number 7, John Cena vs. Cesaro with Zub Coulter and Jack Watt Swagger. Cena got off to a fast start, leading to Cesaro huddling. With his men at ringside, later Cesaro performed the tilt the world backbreaker for a two count. Cesaro controlled the offense and got multiple two counts, though none were particularly dramatic. Then they came back with a cool neck breaker for a two count. Cesaro regained control, heading into a commercial break. Cesaro was back on the offense after the break and put Cena into the super hold. And then Cena performed the two shoulder blocks, but Cesaro set him up for a swing. However, Cena countered into the SCF, but Cesaro Countered that and delivered a gut wreck suplex. Ooh. I think he was uh, mocking Swagger. And he got the two count. Cena uh, retired fire and received plenty of booze from the adult males as he set up for the. And then performed the five knuckle shuffle, five moves of doom. Uh, so they all caught Cena with the big suit uppercut at 14 minutes, 15 seconds. Some of the fans were chanting, This is awesome. 
That's false I repeated the reset the show at the top of the hour. So I went for the swing again, but Cena sat up and a uh, really cool move and delivered a DDT. Later, so I was still on the ropes and pulled Cena off the ring apron into the second rope. Superplex for a two count. Another cool spot that the announcers put over huge. Cena came back with the SCF momentarily. So I reached the ropes for the save. That Cena released the hole and is back and back in the center of the ring and Cesaro performed the Cesaro swing at the top. As the crowd chanted along with each rotation. 17 minutes, 55 seconds in, Cesaro recovered Cena for a good near fall. A much louder, this is awesome chant started. Cesaro went for the neutralizer, but Cena avoided it. Countered into the attitude adjustment, but Cesaro dodged it and countered it and hit him with a big boot. Cena came right back with a big clothesline and then power to the power to the up for the adjustment and scored the pin. And all of them, uh, them, the whole finish uh, was like, it took about a minute because they just went back and forth with it with the finish. And the whole match took 19 minutes, even. Damn good match with some of the great and unexpected counter moves. Counter for counter, for counter for counter. That, that's what makes a good match. It worked really hard and the crowd was uh, really appreciative. Because I held the story that Cena is not ready to pass the torch. So, uh, then said that there's no way to predict who will win the Elimination Chamber match. The announcers have been more engaged tonight than ever and are helping to sell the pay-per-view match that needed all the help it could get coming into the show. Then we get another president thing, a bleak and graphic, and a quote was shown. Backstage, Randy, Randy Orton. Tell Triple H that he appreciates everything he and Stephanie has done. Hunter said, yeah, that's great. He was beginning to think that the pressure was getting to him, but now he sees Orton is making an effort now. Orton said his head was, wasn't was on right, but he's going to make up for it at the chamber. Orton spoke about he and Hunter going, uh, getting back to evolution. They started taking jabs about Batista being a bad face of WWE. Well... Orton didn't know that Batista was, had walked up and stood right behind Orton. When Orton turned around, Batista told him that he's not the face of WWE. He's the ass. Orton walked off as Alberto Del Rio showed up wearing an neck brace. Countering Batista's accent, he said he's not the animal. He's a man. He will make Batista pay on, on Sunday. Del Rio then said he's going to rip Batista's arms off before his WrestleMania match, and Batista shoved Del Rio into some equipment in the segment. Renee Young and uh, Darren Young, Darren Young, the, the Young family, Renee Young and Darren Young. Uh, Renee uh, announced Darren Young versus Titus O'Neil for the pay per view footage to show of the latest angle for SmackDown. On the interview set, Tyler showed up and said that you spell champion. How do you spell champion? She, she didn't answer. He said T-I-T-U-S. Spelling his own name. He said Young was de dead weight and he's going to get mowed over. He got fired up and they said Young would have to sit back and watch the rise of Titus O'Neil. What's the matter? Those in El Torino make their entrance as they go to commercial. The piece will beat up Del Rio again and now Alberto has the neck brace on again. Gee, I'm really sold on the pay-per-view match. Uh, meanwhile, has a raw audience even seen Darren Young in person? On Raw, since the primetime players broke up? Finally, the uh, match that y'all all been waiting for, the Wyatt Family versus Sakaar and Los Matador. Not. Sakaar got a bit of offense on Luke Harper, but the bulk of the match was dominating the Wyatt Family, but Ray Wyatt hit Sister Abigail on Sakaar for the win. Match took 5 minutes 45 seconds. WWE Network and hyping the launch for next Monday. It hyped that the, every pay per view is included, including WrestleMania, the Hall of Fame ceremony. It is also mentioned every week. WWE, WCW, and ECW pay per view, as well as the original programming. Then they go to commercial break. Commercial break. Oh, by the way, one week for free on the network.
This was actually a main event telev television show match last week. The live crowd understandably flat, considering that no, there was no reason for the baby face three on seriously. The graphic hopping that every WWE, uh, WCW, ECW pay per view will also be available on the WWE Network launches. The way that lost did, did their day, their uh, shit. Yo, dog versus Jay Huso with Jimmy in the corner. Dog and Jimmy actually sat under the commentary instead of staying in their respective corners. No controlled the ball for the match, but Jay avoided the famouser and rolled him up for the win. Jimmy caught Dog off with a super kick afterwards. Jay Huso defeated Billy Gunn in 3 minutes 20 seconds. Flat match with decent heel work from the old Dog on commentary. It sounded like CM Punk chant started again late in the match. I wonder if that's what the fans were chanting earlier. When I thought I heard the JBL chant, well, it was clearly CM Punk. Backstage, Byron Saxon interviewed Seamus about his match against Randy Orton. Seamus did the re reward is worth the sacrifice in Elimination Chamber. He said he can taste the main event of WrestleMania 30 of the guys. Not a commercial break. This time, the president. Uh, segment was FDR graphic and, show, and quote were shown. What is Jared of Seamus catching tag partner Christian with a road kick on Sunday? Well, I mean, all, all from SmackDown. Seamus versus Christian was announced for SmackDown. Randy Orton made his entrance and Seamus followed. Paul's all stressed that Randy Orton is 0 5 in elimination chamber matches. World Heavyweight Champion Randy Orton versus Seamus in non match. Adult male led. Punk chant in the crowd started uh, real started real quickly and fa faded as quickly as it started as the match even started as well. Orton sold and dodged Seamus early on. They ran they ran Seamus to shoulder into the ring post heading into a commercial break. After the break, Orton put Seamus through the announcer table with a backdrop. It was pretty routine, but that didn't stop the holy shit chant from the starting of the crowd. Back inside the ring, Orton hits a power sign for a two count. Orton followed up with a Draping DET attempt, but Seamus dodged it and slammed Ken Warren shots into Orton's chest. Fourteen minutes into the match, Orton performed the hate of the draping DDT and set up for his finisher, but Seamus hit him with a pair of Irish Curse backbreakers. Seamus then set up for the world kick, but the shield hit the ring and attacked Seamus. Orton disqualification calls a question. Why? Why now? Cena ran out to help. Then Daniel Bryan ran out. With his shoulder wrapped up to help, Seamus defeated Randy Orton by disqualification in 15 minutes 10 seconds. Lights went out after the Wyatt, fa after the Wyatt, Wyatt family music sounded. When the lights came on, the Seals and the Wyatts were facing one another, and they ended up trading punches to a big pop. The brawl continued with those trios and the Elimination Chamber entrance as the show went off the air. The show started off strong with good Elimination Chamber, Matt, Hyping, and the Daniel Bryan matches. Things really faded from there with a couple of exceptions, most notably the excellent John Cena vs. Cesaro match. But they maybe did a much better job of selling the Elimination Chamber match, but it may have been too little too late. I was surprised to see, to see them go with Orton vs. Sheamus in the main event simply because they haven't done a good enough job in reestablishing Sheamus since his, since his return. I guess this was their attempt to do just whatever they can, and the match was pretty good. But the crowd was too quiet, most of it. The big brawl at the end was was well done and succeeded in terms of leaving me wanting to see more. Thank, <clears throat> what happened after Raw ended? Uh, thank you, Jeffrey Peter, who attended Monday's Raw in Denver, Colorado, and sent the following report on what happened after the taping went off the air. The fight continued until Dean Ambrose and Cesaro were semi-surrounded by John Cena, Daniel Bryan, and Sheamus. Before anything can happen, Cesaro turned around and got Dean Ambrose down and did, this, and did the swing on him about 30 times. And the crowd lost count after 20. Cesaro left the ringside area and then Seamus broke kick Ambrose and left the ringside himself. Cena and Brian were going to leave, but Ambrose started to move again and the crowd booed wildly. Brian did his running kick on Ambrose, then Cena picked up. Ambrose and gave him the attitude adjustment. Brian threw the kick and he ran around ringside giving high fives to, to make the crowd happy and Cena just headed to backstage. Thanks for viewing. Peace out.